Now let me explain about the sharing of events. First, let me give you a background of why it was added. In version 15, we introduced Tree Tips, Ancestral Quest built-in capability to help you research your family. Tree Tips has opened the door to quickly finding new information on your ancestry, such as birth records, death records, marriage records, census records, and so on. Now, Ancestral Quest needed a way to more quickly and efficiently enter and document the information you were finding. Let's take you through a quick example of using the new Share Events feature to enter and document your findings. For this exercise, I want to find a census record. So let me look for a census record of an ancestor. In this case, I'll look for details on Catherine Ann Partington. In this case, I want to use Ancestry.com. Let's do an advanced search as an example. So I'm going to go to the Internet menu, drop down to search Ancestry.com, and do a general search. As part of the advanced search technique of Ancestral Quest, it will first gather a lot of information about the person you're researching along with their parents and spouse. And you'll see here on the left bar that Ancestral Quest has passed to Ancestry the name, birth, marriage, death information, as well as the names of the parents and the spouse. Through this, Ancestry.com can do a really good job of locating the specific person you're after. Now, what I'm really after with Ancestry.com is not this initial list, but if I can find an item in the list that I can tell for sure is my person, in this case, this looks for sure like it's my Catherine Ann Partington, if I'll click on this item and it shows that to me, it will also show over here on the right a list of suggested records. Now these, in my experience, tend to be the same as if you were using Ancestry.com hinting. These are like the cream of the crop records that you would be looking for. In this case, I'm looking for a United States Census. The particular one I want, let me scroll down and see if I can find it here. There it is. I want the 1950 United States Census. So let's view this record and zoom in. So this looks like the family I'm after. This is Catherine Ann Partington as a 17-year-old young woman in the family of her parents, Ralph and Anne. The first thing I would do when I find a family like this in a census is I'll go back to Ancestral Quest and make sure that all of these family members are now entered into my database with the approximate ages that you can gain from the census. And now I'm ready to document the specifics about this event for each member of the family. I'll use the new Share Event feature of Ancestral Quest to speed up this process. So first, let me select one member of the family in my database, and I'll select Catherine M. Partington, and then I will edit her record, and I will add a new custom event. For this type of event, I like to use the residence event because it helps me identify the exact time and place that the person was when the census was taken. In order to fill in the correct date and place, let me go back to the census record and scroll up to the top, where it states that this census page was taken on the first day of August, 1850, in the city of St. Louis, in the county of St. Louis, in the state of Missouri. So let's go enter that into Ancestral Quest. That was 1 August, 1850, in St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. And I could now share this much detail with all of the other members of this family. But first I want to add the source from which this information was gathered. So let me go into Source. This is the 1850 census, which I don't seem to have here, so I will add a new source. Let's create a census type. Now I could fill in various items like the title of the census, the author, publication facts, etc. In this case, I'm going to use the free form because it's quicker for the example I'm giving. In a free form source, you have to give a title that will uh, be what you would look this source up in the list of sources. So I'm going to call this the U.S. 1950 Census Partington Ralph Head of House. And I'm just going to copy and paste from Ancestry. So I'm going to go back to the Ancestry.com record. And on the prior page, Ancestry.com lists at the bottom how they would recommend you cite this source. So the source information down here, I'm going to say is, from the original data, 
the seventh census. I'm going to copy that. And back in Ancestral Quest, I'm going to paste that. And that's good enough for the source. Let's select that source. And now in the citation detail, let me go back to Ancestry and select this information. Paste that into the Ancestral Quest detail. I also like to add the name of the family, so I'm going to say Ralph Partington, head of house in St. Louis. All right, so I've now created the source. We'll hit Save. This is now exactly what I want to enter for each of the other members of the family. I want to record that on this date, in this place, we gathered information from this source that they lived there on that date. Prior to Ancestral Quest version 16, I would now need to create this exact same detail for each individual member of the family and attach each of those residence events to this particular source. That took a bit of time and effort. With version 16, I can now say, let's share this event and source. At the top of the screen, you see exactly the details that you will be sharing. Down below, you could select individuals from Ancestral Quest's uh, powerful filter focus screen, where you can select any group you want. But most of the time that you'll be sharing this type of information, it will be with direct family, whether a couple or a family. In this case, I want to share the information with the family where Catherine was a child with her parents. This is the family that was listed on the census. However, a couple of these children died before the census was taken, so Joseph wasn't on the census and Henry was not on the census. Now, if you start adding different families or different groups and you, you, you make a mess of this list, you can come down here to clear the selections. That'll clear everybody off the screen and let you kind of start over with adding. At this point, I have selected those people that are on the census. I will hit OK. And now I can hit OK to share this. That just made a copy of this information to each member of the family. Now that was a lot easier than adding and documenting this event to each individual member of the family. It's taken me a few minutes to demonstrate and explain the background and technique of, of sharing events, but when you start using it, you'll find that it goes pretty quickly.